Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about the art of negotiation. The art of negotiation. Whether you're selling uh, in a sales negotiation, in a marketing uh, role, or, or a business owner, you will need to master the art of negotiation. And uh, negotiating is tough. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through some of the things that I've picked up about the art of negotiation. Um, I, I declare credit here, by the way, uh, these are some of the tips I've learned from Chris Voss, who is an FBI or was an FBI hostage negotiator, and Jim Camp, who has been for a gazillion years, has been a financial negotiator with big city deals, but also he's negotiated with the infamous IRS. Um, so these guys are pros. At negotiating. So I'm going to walk you through some of the things that I've picked up and I've found to work in negotiations. And I've been in some uh, big ones, but this can also apply to literally a quote for a little job as well as a big deal. So number one, you've got to get your emotions under control. Your need for the deal could undermine your ability to get the deal. Uh, we go in there so desperate to want it uh, that it makes it very difficult for us to see clearly. It makes us difficult to think clearly and it makes it very difficult for us to hear what our customers are saying. And that is important in a negotiation because if our customers are saying things, they're giving us indications of what is stopping them closing, what's stopping them agreeing, but also it's it's showing us why they want to do the deal. Why is this negotiation happening? Uh, and these, these are signals and tools we can use to help us move forward, but we have to have our emotions in check. Um, so that's really important that we have our emotions under control. The next one is, um, and some of you might go, well, negotiation is about creating win-win. It's not about creating a win-win. It's about neither side losing. And that's a real difference. Um, now, you lose by closing a deal at the wrong price, closing a deal at the wrong terms, or you helping the client not reach the deal with you. So you, you get that? Closing the deal at the wrong price, closing the deal on the wrong terms, or helping the client not make the decision. So they're the three things that you could fail and lose in that negotiation. Um, uh, you, uh, losing the deal itself will not be a loss and I'll show you why in a second but there's also uh, you've got to understand how the client loses so if you've got a product you can see the value it can bring to that client um, you have to understand what the client has to lose by not closing this deal how do they feel about the deal uh, you need to understand about uh, understand that if you, want to, if you want to not lose in this negotiation, you need to understand how the client feels. Then you also need to understand another thing. If they can't go for the deal, if they can't make a decision for the deal, what is your alternative? What is your alternative? So uh, it's not about win-win. It's about nobody losing. If you believe in your product, yeah, if you believe in your service, a loss for the client is them not taking the deal. So you have to understand what it is that they will lose out on. Your losses are not getting the right price and not getting the right terms. So, and of course, if you do things that actually helps the client decide this is not a great decision. So uh, coming to what is your alternative deal? You're going in there to close this quote or this uh, proposal you've put together. But what happens if that uh, comes, uh, they want to unpick it, they want to uh, change it, they want to negotiate price. What are the, what's your alternative deal? Not, not, not what, uh, where are you prepared to go? Yeah, because if you know where you're prepared to go, um, you will go to it. What's the second deal that you're prepared to offer? Yeah, so not your bottom stop. What's the second deal that you'd be happy with? Yeah, what's the second deal you'd be happy with? Because I assure you, yeah, closing a deal at the bottom is not a great outcome for you. Um, if you want to build a sustainable business, going to the bottom is not the right frame of mind for your mind to be thinking in. It's not the great way of thinking about the deal. What's your second deal?
what's your alternative deal? So you need to know what that is before you go in there because that's your line. That's where you go to. And you can work between those two parameters. So this is the deal you want and this is the deal that you're prepared to accept, your alternative deal, not your bottom deal, your alternative deal. Remember, mindset in negotiation is massive. So that's really important that you know those two spaces so you can fluctuate between the two. Next one, empathy. Now, this is Chris Voss. Chris Voss has got some great books on this. He calls it tactical empathy. And this is the principle of having a conversation with your customer to draw out how they feel about this situation and, and, and why they're negotiating, why they want to negotiate, why they want the product or service that you're offering and what their objections are. And you're not there to counter them, you're there to listen to them. Now in a negotiation, uh, people will be negotiating with, as we all do, we have what we really want and uh, what we're prepared to say. Often people will start talking about things in a particular way based on what they what they really what they what they tell you that they, they want. In the empathy process, you can start to see it and, and, and draw out of them how they really feel, how they what they really want, and also what what matters to them about the deal. So you can start to think about as part of practicing this empathy where their motivations are, where their emotions are, where their feelings are about the deal. And just like, you know, there's a price we want and there's a price uh, that we would live with in the classic sense of negotiation, when you practice empathy, you will start to, uh, they will, people will start to drift off the, set, off the set lines. They'll start to drift away from their, their script, shall we say, of, of what their counter proposal is and they'll start to show you uh, you'll get little inklings of where they're prepared to go and what what where their space for maneuver is so empathy matters in negotiation not to disagree just to listen repeat back to them so that you understand what they're saying it build helps build rapport but it helps you pull people away from where their lines are and their scripts are so you can see where their real lines are just remember also, it's important to notice that, and I can tell you about this with one particular company. I know a particular company that even if they're happy with the price, they will negotiate and they will push on the price at least three times. They will challenge the price three times, even if they're happy with the price. So it's important that you understand that the negotiation might just be a process. It may not mean there is actually an objection. There might not be a roadblock to the deal. Some people might just be challenging you to see what's possible. So uh, be aware that not all negotiations actually have to happen. Uh, and you learn that by listening, practicing empathy, tactical empathy, as Chris Voss says, mirroring back to them what they say and encouraging them to draw themselves out. Next one, silence. Silence matters. Uh, if you ask a question or you make a comment, be quiet after you've done it because you will then create an awkwardness, a deliberate awkwardness to encourage the other party to respond to what you've said. So use silence as a tool to draw the other party out and explain their position in more detail, explain how they feel about what you've just said. Not to challenge them or anything, but to get them to reveal where they're actually at. Because when we go into a negotiation, we go in with, you know, it, this we're going to do battle. And we've both got our sides. But practicing empathy and using silence helps them draw away from their, their entrenchment, shall we say. And they come out and share how they feel about the deal. Again, you're not trying to create a loss, uh, a win-win. You're trying to create that nobody loses. And a, a deal that is lost for the client if you believe in the value you've got to offer a loss for that client is not closing the deal equally so a loss for the client is is buying at the wrong price so if you manipulate and use manipulative tactics in negotiation you can get the price at a place that you think is great and fantastic and over the world but if you do that that deal will unravel very very quickly so it's about neither side losing um, Again, 
in the negotiation, you need to really understand why they they feel they need your product. If somebody's negotiating with you, it's because they feel they have a need. So if you can understand where they feel they have the need for your product or service or proposal, whatever it is, if you can find out why they feel they have the need, yeah, not why you think, why they feel, because this negotiation is about emotions, it is about um, uh, human, uh, there's egos involved, there's a lot of kind of psychological elements involved, um, and yes, there's facts, but facts won't win a negotiation, so, and it shouldn't be a confrontation, so you have to understand why they feel that this deal is worth negotiating over because once you know this you can start to adjust firstly the position you take between your uh, alternative deal and your main deal but also it, it may not be a question of price in the in the sense that you're talking about it might be terms it might be other things so you need to understand why they feel they need why they feel they need your deal and why they will need to uh, uh, raise objections. What's the logic behind it? And that can be done through empathy, but it can also be done through uh, just listening, creating those silence opportunities. But if you don't know why uh, why they're feeling the need to negotiate and why they feel they want to close this deal, you can't adapt in the negotiation. You can just reiterate your position. Finally, uh, I've, just before I say that as well, uh, remember the objections what are the objections they're saying? And, and, and as part of that negotiation, your job is to understand why they have those objections. Like if there is a pricing issue, wh what is the pricing issue? Is it about their margin? Is it about their return on investment? And how are they expressing that? Again, practicing empathy to draw that out really does matter. And finally, um, uh, you would expect me to say, be prepared to walk away, but I'm not going to say that in, in the same way. Uh, you need to reframe how you think about this deal. Um, in that, often we know the word negotiate means two parties compromising together to reach an outcome. We know that. But often what we do is we approach it like all the power is in one party's hands. So we go, well, actually, this party, we need to get this party to say yes. When actually what you're doing is getting two parties to reach a proposal that they both uh, are reasonably happy with and is a successful outcome for both. Nobody's lost. Um, so that's what you're there to do. But um, this whole walk away thing assumes that they're saying, stating their demands and you don't agree with it. When actually what this is, is you saying to people, this is where I can go to and this is where they can go to. Is there space that we can both live with that arrangement? And not, not necessarily live with it in terms of your bottom line, because if you get to the absolute bottom, you won't be happy with it. You might have closed a deal and you might get that adrenaline rush and that kind of dopamine rush of closing a deal. But if you've closed it and made no money, it's worthless. So losing is, is coming out of that, not feeling like you've got something worthwhile. So... Don't be afraid to to say to, to to walk away. You see, if you're in a negotiation, there is a need that they have to negotiate, but there is also a need they have to close the deal. And for you to negotiate, it means the same thing. You have a need to close the deal and uh, are willing to negotiate to close that deal. So... Uh, you have to understand that both sides are recognize you're recognizing each other's vulnerabilities in that you're vulnerable because you want the deal and they're vulnerable because they want the deal but uh, neither side should be doing this at the cost of sound decisions but you can without being confrontational use the power of no or of i can't go there uh, that won't just kill the deal, but is a compromise. And when you start to get into a compromise, instead of parties coming from, I'm here and I'm here, we go from, actually, we're working together to find the right deal. 
but that all comes from understanding everything that's gone before not being afraid to say this is where i this is what i really really want out of this and i can't really go there no or or making clear your boundaries which is not your bottom stop here will help them find a deal too so uh, using your boundaries also puts pressure on the other side to reveal where their boundaries are and then you can actually find a solution a negotiation a great negotiation should not be two sides uh, dancing around each other it should be two sides coming together to find the deal that works but sometimes we approach it as the confrontation and that's how you use some of these strategies to make it into that collaborative uh, negoti agreement reach yeah we're working together to close this deal a successful outcome at the end of this is a deal that they're happy with and that you're happy with it's not a win-win it's not a lose either so all of these tactics getting your emotions under control really really important negotiating uh, uh, that nobody loses out of this deal making sure nobody loses um, having a clear alternative do you have that clear alternative that's not a bottom stop that's not the scraping the bottom um, what you don't want to do is go in there with not knowing what your second your alternative is because if you don't know what your alternative is you'll make it up as you go along uh, using empathy really really important use empathy no disagreements no challenges is to help their position just explain their uh, learn what their position is and draw it out of them tactical silence tactical empathy tactical silence using silence to draw people out um really really important and of course uh you, you need to understand how and why this negotiation is happening why why they feel they need this deal um really really important and remember negotiation is collaborating together to reach a deal not two sides uh with two positions dancing so there are some of the things i've learned from chris voss and Jim Camp about the art of negotiation.